Game of Thrones season two, episode nine, <laughs> Blackwater. Um, one of the best episodes of season two. We're finally coming to the end, and sorry for the wait, guys. We've had some technical difficulties, as in Westworld has been a complete mind fuck. So we had to rest our brains, but we're back doing Game of Thrones, going strong. And some might say better than ever. Some might say, who would say that? Your mom? <laughs> she watches the videos. She's a big fan. Yeah, she wants to be in an episode. We'll try to work that out. What's that mom show with Alice and Janney and uh, mom. Chris Pratt? Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. You get your mom, I'll get my mom. Get Stu's mom and be a whole mom. That's not going to happen. Uh, let's jump right into this episode. Um, one of the best episodes, like I said, of season two of the show overall. And I was reading some reviews of it that people were saying this is the episode when Game of Thrones became a phenomenon and that they had to convince HBO to give them $8 million to produce this episode because before this, I think epi- every episode was about $2 million. Uh, but you could see this, just the scope of this episode. It's when Game of Thrones became an epic. It transformed from the political drama to a political epic. Which is, it's just great to see it unfold. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite episodes of the whole show. Just the first time we've seen a battle like this in Game of Thrones. Well, up until this point, if you're watching from the beginning. And right. And it's just so, uh, I just go back to that one scene. I love it. Stannis, when Tyrion finally defeats him in the Channing half man, and you see Stannis' man, and they clash oh. in front of the wall. Clash of Kings. Oh, it's epic. Beautifully directed by Neil Marshall, who's become, he's directed some of the better episodes of the show, and written by George R. R. Martin. I always love the episodes that he writes, because... People criticize his writing. They say it's not, they say it's prosaic. There's something left to be desired. I enjoy his writing in the novels. I think he's a clever writer. Oh, yeah. His one liners is sometimes it does get a little repetitive where some characters yeah, when are he speaking like other like characters. A, yeah, when he describes like a whole meal. Right. <laughs> for like two pages. But even like characters on opposite sides of the world will use the same sayings yeah. that seem to be unique to a specific character. And then another person says it. It's like, oh, they're on the Westerosi internet picking up the same slang. But I, I enjoy the episodes that he writes. And this first scene between Davos and his son, it's a great scene. And you get in the perspective again from Davos where, like Tyrion, it reminds me of the scene where Tyrion gives the speech later in the episode where he's saying, don't fight for your king, don't fight for your kingdoms, fight for yourself. And Davos is telling his son, they don't see us as liberators, man. They see us as terrorists almost. We're coming to blow shit up. Stranger come to set their city on fire. Now this is very optimistic. <laughs> this whole episode, really. He's just talking about, oh, they're welcoming their new king. Like, oh, where's their fleet? They probably mutinied. And Davos is like, ah, yeah. I, I've, I've seen this game play out a, a little bit longer than He's you He's like have, us but... rooting for the Knicks. <laughs> He's just trying to justify everything that goes wrong. It's like, this is going to be something that helps us. Trust me. But I, it's like a, a sports fan or an athlete. When you're coming into a game where you know you could be the underdog, and I wouldn't say they're the favorite here. Yeah. Uh, but you never think you're going to lose. It's like, oh, yeah, LeBron, all he has to do is win game four, steal one on the road, come back game six at home, and game seven, anything can happen. Yeah, that's it. That's all you need to do. <laughs> uh, but it's always great to get Davos' perspective on these sort of things. Continue, And this is why I always say that I was conflicted in this episode because I liked Davos so much, and I hated the Lannisters. And even though I liked Tyrion, I didn't hate anybody on Stannis' side. Well, they're very new. We've had Tyrion for two seasons, and we've grown to love him. This is the beginning. Like, like I'm not, I don't, I can't remember if I was really like rooting for Davos. I mean, obviously, as, I was a hundred as the seasons for that. Went, as the seasons went on. I'm all team Davos all the way, especially after I read the books. But at this point, I'm trying to remember. I don't. I liked him. He was a good character, but Stannis is very Stannis. He's well. I really... think I was just rooting against the Lannisters because I hated them. Yeah, except for Tyrion. Sure. Um, and this next scene with Tyrion and Shay in bed, you brought up the fact that Tyrion is he's very afraid in this scene. And it's, it's what does he say to Daenerys that people who aren't afraid are madmen like her father. Um, and even Shay, where she's concerned about Tyrion. And this is why I always think that Shay did love him. Yeah, she seems very genuine in the scene. Yeah, just a great scene. Like she calls back, like remember what you said to me that first time we met in your tent, and it's a nice moment. It's a nice little calm before the storm. Oh, this whole beginning is the calm before the storm with Cersei looking out the window, and you could see the winds coming. I, this scene is so well written by George R. R. Martin with Pycelle and Cersei, that relationship that they have where Pycelle is putting on the act and Cersei just wants none of it. Give me my drugs so that I can murder my son. She's very, yeah, she's very sarcastic about it, too. It's like, oh, I'm sure many people want your wisdom in these trying times. Great line, too. It's like, be careful on the steps. There's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> just too quick, man. She's yeah. great in this. And we see throughout the episode with Cersei, she has contingencies for Stannis 1, whether it's Sir Illyn or the Essence of Nightshade. You know, any other man but Stannis, I might have a chance, but she knows what's coming, and she'd rather her and her children die than be at Stannis's will. 
And this next scene with Braun and he's singing with the Lannister men and they're, I guess in a way it is the calm before the storm where they're just trying to celebrate what could be their last night alive. And the Hound walks in the room and the Hound, man, he just can't take when people are enjoying themselves, man, because he just hates society so much. And we're going into war and you guys are fucking celebrating. It's, it's cool to see that dichotomy between the Hound and Braun, just how they, their outlook on life. Well, the very opposite as you can tell, like, that whole setup. He's like, oh, where'd you learn the Lannister song? Drunk Lannisters. Bronn really knows how to work a room. He's killed Oh, it. yeah, he's great. And the whole scene with him and, I guess, the whore, that's great when he's telling the story about all the times he broke his nose. Yeah, and you see that contrast between Bronn and the Hound, but the Hound tells him, he's like, hey, we're more alike than you think. We're just killers. He does that all the time. I think it's just to justify himself. That yes. He kind of likes killing, so he puts that on other people. He did that with Ned last season, or this season, too, when he's talking to Sansa. But, yeah, and the, the awkward tension in the room... <laughs> When You're just like, like me, except smaller and quicker. Everyone's like, <laughs> oh, oh great. Yeah. Yeah, these two, they're always doing this. Yeah, Han and Six, by the way. I think yeah, bronze has got a shot, though. Yeah, Bronze, he wins yeah. a couple games. Yeah, I think so. And the scene between Varys and Tyrion, we're getting more insight into why Varys distrusts magic. And I think this is the first time where he opens up to Tyrion about his past. And he doesn't say what happened with the wizard that cut off his balls, but... He says, Stannis has taken up with the Red Priestess. I can't imagine a man like that serving that god, having the power of the Iron Throne. And it's it's kind of Varys. He's always kind of unbiased. And now it's it, it's his biases showing. The whole scene, too, it's, uh, he goes, Pod, is that it? He's like, is that it? Nice touch. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. He, he did say it in a way like, oh, I don't remember you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Tyrion gives like a nice little... That's a nice running joke. It's like Deadpool where they keep thinking Cable's a racist. Everybody thinks Varys is a pedophile. Yeah, and Tyrion gives that nice little uh, speech about how, you know, crazy as that seems, I'm the captain of the ship and I'll go down with it. And Varys says, yeah, a lot of people say that before while the ship is afloat. Yeah, I think even here you mentioned it in uh, one of the previous episodes that Varys is thinking of head thinking that I need to keep Tyrion alive if this all goes bad. Yeah, and that last shot of Tyrion when he's getting ready oh. and Podrick hands him the axe and he's like... Looks like a gangster. <laughs> Yeah. The weight of the world on this one man's shoulders. And Varys tells him, he's like, I think you're the only man who can stop Stannis. And Tyrion's like, how the fuck did I end up here from where I was last year? Pissing off of the wall, fucking whores in Winterfell, and now I'm battle for my life to save an entire kingdom. Well, just his life in general. Like, yeah. He's just the plumber of Castle Rock. <laughs> now he's fucking... And the bells line, too. It's like, oh, I hate when the bells ring. It always signifies something bad, a dead king or a war, a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> And then Davos is like, oh, you guys got the bells? Oh. You got the fucking drums, boy. Drums! <laughs> you want to play music? Them. We'll play music. He's got, you can, they go off on that. They I'll do go off. They're ready to fight with that. I love that in war. When, and Tyrion, when he says to Bronn, Bronn says to him, be safe. And he's like, you too, my friend. And Bronn's like, oh, we're friends? <laughs> it's almost like Tyrion sees Bronn as a whore. It's like, I pay you for my ser- for your services, but you know, you're still well, that, like, Just because I pay you for your services doesn't diminish our friendship. He's platonic Shay. Yeah. I was like, oh, it enhances it, really. Yeah, yeah. Enhances it, fancy word. Been yeah, hanging fancy. out with fancy folks. <laughs> Bro, that's their dynamic in this whole season. One of the reasons that I love season two is there's a great video on YouTube where it's all their funny moments throughout the show with a laugh track. And this this is a buddy comedy, man. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Tyrion goes to uh, see Sansa off and he plays, oh, uh, Sheila. It's like, all right, Shay, dickhead. We were just in bed together. Shay. <laughs> Yeah, but obviously he has to do I'm that. I'm your whore, remember? He has to keep appearances in front of Sansa, and she Well, said, the line by Sansa is saying that she's praying for everybody to come back, and Tyrion's like, are you? Yeah, just as I pray for the kings. Like, yeah, what's that worth? <laughs> like, I'm going to do everything to get him killed, Sansa. So, And I think even Sansa in this scene, she's like, oh, Joffrey, are you um, you're fighting on the front lines, right? Oh, she's that's checking what my brother does. Yeah. But I think she's like almost trying to entice him to do it. Yeah. It's like, well, my brother doesn't. All the great kings do it. Oh, yeah, your brother fights on the front lines? Check this out. <laughs> I'm going to go fight for them. <laughs> I'm going to change sides. It's and nice. he's just such a prick, man. I know. It's so, it's so good, though, because the actor, Jack Leeson, he's such a good actor because when you watch him in interviews, he's not a prick, but when you watch him in the show, he's just such a tool bag. Yeah, kiss it when I return and taste my uncle's blood. <laughs> it's like, I'll, your brother will get your turn, and then you'll taste his blood, too. Yeah, that's it nice. wasn't wrong. Yeah, it's a good one when Shay says, uh, you know, all these boys are going off to die, and Sansa says the worst ones always live. And that just she, that just shows where she's at right now. She's expecting the worst. 
Like, yeah. oh, there's no way Joffrey can die. It's too easy. And Joffrey is such a tough guy, and then as soon as he approaches the walls and sees that the ships are coming, he's like, what the hell? Even before <laughs> that, when he's walking up the stairs and there, there's yeah. like a mad rush going around with the soldiers, he looks shook like a little kid. And the lines between Tyrion and Joffrey and Lancel and the Hound when it's like, you know, I can have the Hound cut you in half. He's like, well, then I'd be the quarterman. Lancel, tell the Hound to tell the king. Yes. <laughs> And I think it goes back to Mathos, and he's still optimistic. He thinks their uh, sailors are mutinied because they see that there's no ships. And Chime's like, w- why are there any ships? Where are all the ships? Tyrion's yeah. like, just fucking wait, guy. I remember when I was watching it, too, I was very confused about what was going on. Even when you see the lone ship without the anybody sailing it, I, I had no idea what Tyrion was planning. And I could understand why Mathos would think, oh, their sailors are mutinied, they're... They know that we have the odds, and Davos is still skeptical, even though everything seems to be going their way, and that skepticism proves to be right. I think he knows the way of the common folk, because he, he came from yeah, definitely. low bringing, so he knows their mentality during war and how they regard the higher-ups. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and back in the Red Keep with Cersei and Sansa, some of the best scenes between any characters in the show. Yeah. And what makes these scenes kind of suck now is that Sansa didn't really take a lot of her advice. <laughs> You would think that these moments would really transform Sansa. And she is more like Cersei in season six and season seven. She has that ruthlessness. No, yeah, I love these scenes. I think they're the best. As good as the episode is and all the battles, I love these scenes probably the most. I think these scenes are the best part of the episode. And you see Cersei explaining, like, the small nuance of war and how she's explaining how, well, we paid these guards. You know, once Stannis comes, it might not be. Once Stannis comes, they can just turn to his side or do whatever they want and how the small folk can cause problems. And we see later when she uh, sentences them to die and hang them. So it's like a message to all the small folk. She refers to them as the uh, war's first traitors. Yeah, Sansa has been raised by the Starks, and obviously they inspire loyalty and love from the small folk. Cersei's saying the way that you keep control is that you need them to fear you. Yeah. So it's a very different approach to dealing with the small folk. Fear you more than your enemies. Right, exactly. And then this next scene. One of the best, we keep saying it about this episode, this episode is a fucking masterpiece, but this is the best moment of this season. The best moment, top five moment in the show. Yeah, you can argue it's the best moment of the show. When that ship is sailing towards them and they have no idea what's going on and it's leaking that wildfire, I was like, oh shit. And the uh, the alchemist, I love his face. He's like, eh, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> and I love how Tyrion, like, he pants over, he sees the alchemist, he's like, and he looks at the hound and he looks at Joffrey and he gives him like a little, he gives him like a little look there. It's like, yeah. Told you to fucking wait. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> uh, and Braun, man, just like uh, in The Last Samurai, when he just lights up that one arrow, just perfect shot. Mathis, get down! <laughs> yeah, I thought he was toast. Davos? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought he died. I was like, oh, I like this guy. That sucks. He's dead now. But I love Stannis' reaction, too. He just says, fuck it. We still got this. <laughs> and the man's like, but the ships and all this and hundreds will die. Fire. There are archers. Hundreds will die. Thousands. <laughs> it's just like John's line in season seven when he's talking to, to Daenerys and she asks, How many men did your army kill taking Winterfell back from the Baltics? Thousands. He's got a lot of Stannis in him. I yeah. think he learned some, some stuff from Stannis. But uh, Stannis is great in this episode, man. The way that he's just such a gangster, front lines. Yeah, he's leading the charge the whole way through. Oh, they took out our fleet? Fuck it, we still got these little ass boats. <laughs> Yeah. Let's just roll up on them. And we talked about the $8 million budget. It's obviously a really big episode, but this moment here, it's just a very unique visual. It's unlike anything we've really seen. The green substance, this green wildfire, it's, it's just, it was a great job by the visual effects team. But man, to, just to see the, the power of the wildfire, one of the first great magical moments of the show, but it still fits in with the realism of the show too, because even from Tyrion's perspective, he's watching what happens. It's like a napalm, too, which is how it just sticks and splashes on. The yeah, fire, splashes and they're on terrified, people. though. Yeah. E- even Tyrion, he's like, what if, it's almost like, what have I done? All the men that I've just murdered, but that's just the situation they're in. Fuck it. Shouldn't, shouldn't have been talking shit. Yeah, and back in Cersei and Sansa, another great scene where she's kind of explained to her what is going to happen if Stannis takes King's Landing, that they're just going to be ruthless. Yeah. Shay says later in the episode that Stannis won't kill her, and I think he would have spared Sansa. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. doesn't make sense. I think Cersei's trying to put it in her head that Stannis is this crazy wild man who's going to rape her and kill her if he takes the city. 
So he's keeping the morale up. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god! Imagine just being in that room. It's just so silent. They hear everything she's saying. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, oh, they'll be in for a bit of a rip. It's like, oh, what the fuck? They're all gonna have bastard babies. Shay looks at her like, especially Santa. She's trying, she's fucking, I'd be terrified. It's like anything with tits looks good, and a pretty little thing like you look like a nice piece of cake. Like a slice of cake. Oh shit! Come on. Yeah, and she feels like tears aren't a woman's only weapon, but you could tell that. And she even says, anyone else but Stannis, I might have a shot. I can throw myself at them, beg for whatever mercy. But Stannis, she knows Stannis will do what needs to be done to protect his seat on the throne, which means killing her children, probably killing her, killing any Lannister, right? Even Tyrion says before, everyone with the name, last name Lannister will have their head on the spike. I think there's, yeah, I guess so. Even after what Tyrion just did, I was thinking, oh, maybe this is a, there's a chance that Tyrion gets spared. But yeah, no way. If yeah. your name is Lannister, you, you're, getting the, you're getting the boot. Speaking of Tyrion, on the fly, putting audibles out. Once oh, this is great. They keep going yeah. up, and Stannis just takes up the defense and he sends the hound on, the hound out, have a formal welcoming party. He gets tells them to get the other men from the other gates, bring them here. It bothers you that Stannis is not wearing a helmet, right? Or any of the main characters, really. <laughs> like, well, Stannis, it's because his skull is made out of Valyrian steel. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah he doesn't need a helmet. No. He, he, I'm surprised he just didn't climb up the ladder and start headbutting people to death. Because that would have been fucking awesome. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, when they greet them at the mud gate and the hound, it's like, if anybody dies with a clean sword, I'll rake their corpse. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, hound. Thanks for the speech. <laughs> He's great, man. Um, but then, yeah, back in Cer- back with Cersei. And you said that the battle is great in this episode, but it's these scenes that really make it. And I read a review. Somebody said that. The battle is so large in scope, but it's the focus that makes it great. Because no moment is wasted. It's just not people dying in battle. It's just not a giant battle sequence. It's these smaller character moments where you're getting their own personal perspectives of what war is and how this is affecting them. Throughout the battle, it builds the characters. It builds Stannis as a leader, first man in. He'll lead the charge. He doesn't care. Uh, Tyrion is being able to adapt the Hound. The Hound's character grows tremendously in this episode through the battle. This is a huge turning point for him. Yeah. Um, and Cersei, the, the line in this scene that she says that always sticks with me is when she says, I should have been born a man. Yeah. And it's something that we can assume by seeing her character, and it's a line that you usually don't say out loud, but it's it's a moment of vulnerability where Cersei is saying, this shouldn't be what I'm doing. I shouldn't be in here with you. I should be out there fighting. Rather face a thousand swords than to be locked up with these group of hens. <laughs> uh- and she talks about the differences between her and Jamie, that they looked so much alike as children, yet she couldn't understand why they were treated differently. That he was taught to fight, and she was taught to smile and, and sing sold and please off. people. Yeah, yeah, and then sold off like a horse. And Sansa still has a little bit of that in- innocence. It's like, but you were Robert's queen. Yeah, don't, didn't you like that? Yeah, and you will be Joffrey's. It sounds like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I'm starting to piece itself. things together now. I love to see when Cersei starts grilling Shay. Ten years and made you all the way to your Red Keep without learning how to curtsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is Tyrion's not thinking like I, I should teach her how to curtsy? That's a whack curtsy. Yeah. She's like, uh it's like a Picel curtsy. <laughs> she was, Cersei was really close to figuring that out until Lancel, who got a fucking bow and arrow on the battlefield and ran like a bitch. Yeah. You give Cersei a quick play by play. I love that too. He's Cersei's like, bring Joffrey back. Shouldn't he be out there fighting with the men? Shouldn't you be? Why the fuck are you here? It's like, well, the arrow. The arrow. I'm, I'm injured. It hurts. Purple heart. And it's cool, too, when Cersei reveals why Sir Ellen is really here. Oh, she couldn't have put that together by Sir Ellen's terrifying face. I can't want to judge. He's, he's like foaming at the mouth almost to kill them. It's like, <laughs> please, please let Stannis take the city. Please. <laughs> and I love how, too, that Shay later in the episode just says, Sir Ellen will kill you, Stannis won't, and Sir Ellen's right there. But he can't say anything to anyone, so you could just tell him all the dirty secrets. Yeah, that's how Jamie uses him yeah. later on. And the battle continues. Stannis first went up the ladder. He's I love that about him. You know, he's very yeah. like, hey, if I'm going to make you such an opposite from Joffrey. Not only is he there with his men, he's leading the charge. Right. Imagine that was like today, like in like a war. Like Trump was leading, like <laughs> he was on the front lines against or, Canada. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> beefing with our neighbors over Russia yeah. or Mexico. So it should be like a trial by combat, just Putin versus Trump. What a sword! Oh, you cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> For settling what? I don't know. Beef. One of the main reasons that the Hound just leaves the war is because one, he thinks that it's a lost battle, it's a lost cause. They're not going to win. 
But he's seeing the fire, all these men engulfed in fire fighting on the beaches, and we know the history of the Hound, that what his brother did to him when he pushed his face in the fire. So I, it, it's a combination of him just tired of taking orders from the Lannister family, just tired of all the political bullshit that this war is really being fought for no reason, and it's also his biggest fear everywhere, <laughs> engulfing everybody. The Hound and Joffrey both give up on the battle, but the Hound says, fuck the war, fuck the king, fuck everything, I'm out of here. Fuck the water, give me wine. Yeah, I don't have enough of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And it's I love like, Tyrion's face, he's like, eh, he's got a point. It's kind of like LeBron out there, there's no help, it's just him. Lance so he gave up on Lance, his... Lance was like, quitting. Yeah. No, don't put he needs better there. teammates, though. Yeah. Uh, Tyrion's kind of his Kyrie Irving. <laughs> but he's not out there with him. That speech, though. Oh, yeah. When Joffrey leaves and Tyrion has to take charge. One of the best speeches. Since when? Second best speech. Since when? In Gettysburg. I was going to say Reagan telling Gorbachev, tear down the wall. <laughs> um, second best speech in the show, though, behind John's speech to the Wildlings. Because I still think that's the best speech. Nothing gets me more pumped up to fight in a battle. But this speech is great because you're getting that perspective once again, like Davos in the beginning of the episode. Don't fight for your king. Don't fight for your kingdoms. Fight for yourself. Fight for your women. Fight for your houses because they're coming here to murder you. It's personal at this point. And his men, are, they get hyped up. And he says, those are brave men knocking at our door. Let's go kill them. You got the reins of Casimir in the background. Yeah. That's such a perfect fucking scene. Great speech, too. Yeah, and at this point it does, even though I was rooting for Stannis, I never thought he was going to win, but at this point you're thinking, oh, Stannis might, and his men might take the throne, because they're blasting through the gates, their men are cornered, it's, it's just a numbers game at this point. And Lancel tells Cersei that the battle is lost, and Cersei says, whoa, I'm out of here. <laughs> no, no, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, and Sansa <laughs> and Shay are like, whoa, we're out of here too. <laughs> well, Shay stays till Sansa yeah, she go. Say. It's just like, nobody's gonna rape me, because I have this little ass pencil on my <laughs> neck, I'm on, on my leg. <laughs> it's power music right now. It's like, oh, everyone's down in the dumps. Let me just play a banger. <laughs> Gentle mother. <laughs> Font of mercy, save our sons from war, we pray. Gentle. <gasps> uh, <laughs> yeah, it sounds leaves, and the hound is sitting there waiting for her. And I just want to point out quick that when Sansa enters the room, she goes straight for the doll that Ned made her in season one. And it's so funny to think that Sansa wanted nothing to do with the doll. She was like, oh, I'm not a little girl anymore. Why are you giving me this? And now it's it's one of the last things that she has of her father. And just the look that she gives it, it's it's heartbreaking. Cause he's just so when I first saw this, I was like, I think he's going to do something to her that I'm not going to like. <laughs> That's going to be really disturbing. And but he's, he does always, he's always kind of had her back this season, very subtly, in a, the way a, the Hound only can. And this scene, obviously, you don't have enough time. This episode probably should have been like an hour and a half, looking back, even though it is a masterpiece. But it this is short. Scene, when I was rewatching, it's like 54 minutes. Yeah, it is short. Um, this scene should have is so much better in the book because it, it's even creepier in the book, but you're getting even more insight into that relationship where he has her sing for him, it's like sing me a song, and he's just mocking her and meanwhile he's the one that's running away yeah. and Sansa's the one who stays which you can argue what was the right thing to do she probably should have left right there with the Hound yeah but then you look at what the Hound's journey was like I don't know if Sansa's really built for that right at this point no May, at the end of season 3 I think she would have been ready if this if the Hound offered her this after her family was killed and he goes back he's like the Lannisters are killers Stannis is a killer your brother is a killer your father's a killer it's great it's just the commentary on the politics and how these people in power they're putting the smaller folk in these situations where they're being forced to kill and they don't even really know why look at the way that this war started this conflict started it's because one guy was murdered is this really worth it or even from stannis's let your nephew have the throne is this really worth it he's living good you know yeah hey you got dragonstone you got your red priest well she's hyping him up too much she was hyping him up <laughs> yeah did. we really see like you said before like you didn't know who to root for you're kind of rooting for stannis but Davos is gone right away, and you're left at Stannis, and he's not really fleshed out, but Tyrion, at this point, he's really leading the charge, and at this point, I'm all for Lannisters, because it's Tyrion's war right now. Yeah, it's that Tyrion moment versus where- Tyrion uh, There's no Davos anymore, because you think he's either dead or he's floating around on a rock somewhere, but it's right now, it's really Tyrion versus Stannis, and Stannis at this point, eh. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I said for the first time, but now looking back, it's I'm not really rooting for anyone. And I think most fans found themselves in that position. And that's the genius of the show. We always say it, but where it's, you got good and bad on both sides, man. You like characters from one side, you like characters from the other, you hate characters from both sides. It's it's just the genius of the show. Nothing is black and white. It's very gray. And the moment where Tyrion is getting that recognition for his men when they're cheering him for pushing back Stannis's army, the half man, half man, Tyrion's like... I can get used to oh, this. When he, when he comes out and fucking takes that guy's leg off. Yeah. Like, All right, Tyrion, I see you. Well, the line, too, from Braun earlier in the episode, he's like, I saw you kill a man with a shield. You'll be unstoppable with an axe. Um, and this battle sequence is, I mean, it is better in the book. I read this battle sequence during the 4th of July, the first time I ever read it. So fireworks were going off, and I was reading his writing. It's so descriptive, man. The guy is like a fucking military mastermind. <laughs> One of the best couple of... It's because it's like five chapters long. It's just so well written. Tyrion fights more in the book, but it, it was cool to see him fight under these circumstances. I, again, I just love when those, those two armies just clash right in front of the walls and it kind of pans up and out. It's such a, that's a great shot. Did you think uh, Tyrion died the first time you saw it? No. The very first time I saw it, I was like, oh shit, his head just got split in half. <laughs> I didn't know... the who, way they direct it. Well, I didn't piece it together like that. Sir Mandan, like, he kind of smiles at him and then he... Chops him, but I mean, Pod coming in with the save of the century. Yeah, that was a good save, man. I like this better too when he just puts a fucking spear through him instead of what did he push him into the water and let him drown? I th- yeah, I don't remember. And that really starts like all the suspicion because Tyrion thinks in the books that Cersei put him up to it and all that. So and it was Littlefinger. <laughs> 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 fucking Littlefinger, man. Best moment of the episode is when Tyrion blows up Stannis's fleet, but the best scene of this episode is this final scene between Cersei and Tommen. The way that it's shot, the way that it's written, where you're going back and forth from the battle to them on the Iron Throne, it's gut-wrenching, man. And Cersei is, up until this point, you still, as the audience, you still hate this character, but to see her have this endearing moment with her child where she'd rather kill him herself than let Tommen be killed by her enemies. And it's such a tough situation to be in and decision to make for anybody, but as a mother especially, to kill your own son to let him die in your arms, it's it's gut-wrenching. Oh, yeah, and she's telling the story, and it cuts yeah. back to Tyrion laying down. He looks up. He can see his father's army coming with the... Uh, is, it Lor- is Lawrence wearing Stannis, uh, Renly's armor in this one? Yes, it is Lawrence, because when he's in the throne room, he's got the same horse, and he takes off the stag helmet. Well, in the books, it's uh, Garland, but... Right. They're- I never noticed it, too, until I seen it this time, that there is someone with a stag helmet. Uh, same thing with me. I was looking I was looking for it yeah. specifically because I was going to complain that they didn't include it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the then, fucking worst. Yeah, and I was where's where's uh Renly's peach and his helmet and his armor. But yeah, that's cool cuz in the book the his men all think that he's still alive and they're like, "Oh, we got to get out of here." Go go ghost. Renly, we didn't mean to side with your brother. It's great too like Stannis like, "Stay and fight, you coward." Yeah. It's like, "Ah, we got to get out of here." We lost this one, chief. Live the fight another day. Yeah. Or live to burn your daughter alive, north of the wall. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and <laughs> Tywin, I mean, he's like, the war, it's over. We won. Or the battle. And Tywin, man, that guy. I <laughs> Taking credit for what Tyrion does. Because in the next season, you can see where Tyrion is. It's like, where's my reward? <laughs> it's like, for reward for what? For saving the fucking city, Dad. Yeah, it's- And she's close to killing Tommen, man. That would have been like a Romeo and Juliet ending. They come in just a dead grandson and daughter on the throne. That would have been fucking dark. Well, was she going to drink, or was it just for Tom, and you think? No, she probably drinks, too. Yeah. She's probably definitely checking out of there. Shots, 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 shots. You're letting your underage son drink? How dare you? It's poison. Oh, okay, that's fine. Poison? <laughs> yeah, it's great. When, like, Loris comes in, he's like, he's pissed. He's like, ah, oh, fuck, Cersei. Why did I fight with them? Oh, yeah, wait, no. I think I chose the wrong side. <laughs> it's great, man, because both sides suck. It's talk, so funny. Talk about it. end credits when they play the Reigns of Castamere. Oh, I love that rendition. I once played that in college at a party. I swear to God. Did you get thrown out? No, it was funny. Oh, okay. It wasn't like a real play. Was everybody like, like bumping to it? No. Someone was like, oh, what the fuck is this? The only Game of Thrones fellow nerds were like, <laughs> I remember one time at a party, somebody was like, oh, give me your iPhone for uh, to play on the music. And I'm like, you don't want to do that. <laughs> And like three songs in, it's like Mozart's Piano Concerto number 21, and everybody's like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, I don't know whose phone that is, man, but that guy's <laughs> a fucking loser. Yeah, good times. I hate high school, but I love this episode, man. Masterpiece. Can't say it. 10 out of 10. Yeah. 10.1 10. out of 10. No, probably not. Can you do that? 
I don't know. No, you break the scale. You don't want to break the scale. I don't want to stop the scale. I want to break the scale. It's a little Daenerys right there for you. 10 out of 10. Great episode. Set the standard for what we expect from Oh, that. from season five, where she yep. says she's going to break the wheel, yep, yep. but you replace it with scale. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good reference. It's a way to tie it in. Yeah, I mean, that's what I do. That's what we do, but mostly you. Yeah. Because I'm not an idiot. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video, and before we go, I want to quickly thank our Patreon supporters. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to grow and evolve as a channel, so thank you for your generous pledges. If you are interested in supporting our channel through Patreon, visit www.patreon.com nerdsoup, and you can see the different rewards we offer to our Patreon supporters. T-shirts, mugs, stickers, access to our behind-the-scenes video, and more. Thanks again for watching this video, and make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Or dislike, don't share, and unsubscribe. It's a binary world, folks.